Have you ever heard of the phrase, go big or go home? Well, that's because so many of us shrink ourselves. We play it small and we don't do all of the things that we're supposed to do. But in today's video, we are gonna talk about how to go real big in every area of your life. Everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. I am your host, licensed marriage and family therapist, Keandra Jackson. And boy, do we have a show for you today. Oftentimes, I always encourage you guys to live out your full potential, be your authentic self, live in your purpose, go big, be who God created you to be. And guess what? We're going to talk about that very thing today because I have an amazing special guest expert for you today. Dr. Will Moreland is one of my faves. He has been named as one of the global top 30 gurus. Not only that, but he is literally a best-selling author of 40 plus books. He has done over 1,200 keynote speeches. He is the visionary of I Dominate Speakers Magazine and Genius Speakers Academy. He is an army vet, a husband, a father, and a new grandpa, a sneakerhead, and most of all, he is one of my coaches. So please let me welcome Dr. Will Moreland to the show. <laughs> Will Moreland, welcome to the Keandra Jackson Show. I am so excited to have you today. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm super excited about being here. I told you I'm coming with guns blazing. I am ready for the Keandra Jackson Show. I'm ready to set the internet on fire. So let's do this thing. Oh my God. I already told the people that you're one of my favorites. You're also from Compton. You're my coach. You taught me a lot of the things that I know about speaking and the industry as well. So I'm sure that my audience is absolutely looking forward to hearing all of the gems that you will drop today. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm ready to rock and roll. I love it. So your journey has been amazing. When I saw a post that you recently did, you did this post, and I don't even know if you remember, you made a post saying that you had a conversation with your coach, and your coach said, look, you got here, you out here thinking and letting people think that you are just this, you know, speaker, but you do so much more than that. Why are you playing small? And that was the post that said, let's see if Dr. Will want to come on the show because we got to talk about playing small, going big or going home and how some of those things can really just hold us back. So tell us a little bit about what does it mean from your perspective to play small? So we come from, especially where a, a place where we come from in terms of being Black in America. I come from a Christian background. And so you hear a lot about humility. You hear a lot about don't toot your own horn. Let other people talk for you. Let your work speak for itself. And so when we talk about playing small, for me, it's really about when you shrink yourself. And that's uh, easy to do because you know this for uh, individuals like us that are in the public eye, we're in this this weird type of space where I say we're not on cover of Forbes, but I'm I'm not in the unemployment line, right? I got some credit out here in these streets, and so it's it's hard for those that are kind of close to you to kind of really see who you are. Like most of your friends, oh man, that's my boy Will from Luzinga. Hey, what's going on, dog? How you know? And so they still see you where they met you, but you've done a lot since you've met them. I, I went to college. I've got an advanced degree. I've got two advanced degrees. I've traveled the world. And once again, you don't want to be in your space and your in your in your section of people talking like this, but you can't forget. You can't forget the work that you've put in, the work that you've done just because other people haven't put that work in. And so it's always, for me, I've been working through this. It's like if you and your friend go to the gym and y'all start working out and they fall off, but you get the body you want, but you say, you know what? I'm still gonna wear these big sweaters because I don't want her to feel bad for her not doing what she was supposed to do. So that's, you know, in a sense, playing small. No, if you went and worked for that body, show that body off. Show off the body, yaddy, yaddy. That's what yeah. he said. Show off the work. It reminds me, since we're talking about, you know, Christianity, it reminds me of that scripture in the Bible where Jesus said he couldn't even perform miracles in certain cities, right? Because they didn't believe. But also, I think it was because he was so common to the certain place that they knew him. Oh, that's just Mary's boy. That's just Joseph. And people didn't understand the power that he had. And I think you're correct. You're right. A lot of us, 
we are, you know, doing some great and some amazing things, especially, you know, growing up in Compton and people just think, oh, that's little Kiki. You know, I know her mom. I know her from the hood, from the block, all of that stuff. Not the block. Like, I was on the block. But you know, I get what I'm saying. Right. <laughs> but I just know her, you know, from around the way. And people don't realize that there's so much work that happened behind the scenes for us to get here. You know, it took a lot of resilience and persistence. And I know your story it's amazing. Like you used to gang bang and you drop all of these pictures with your pants sagging and stuff. And I'm like, how did you even transition from all of that, the, the street life and what we've gone through in, you know, certain areas till now? Because I do believe that, you know, there takes a shift. There has to be a moment for a lot of us that says, OK, I can no longer do the things that I used to do. And I need to make a shift, not only for myself, but for my wife. You a new grandpa. Okay, you got a new granddaughter out here. This is generations and this is legacy. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about how the younger Dr. Will used to play small. And what were some of the things that he used to do that he no longer can do because of where you're going? Yeah, so, you know, it does take a shift. And a lot of this really deals with our assignment right? All of us are equal, right? As it relates to humanity, but we have to acknowledge that some of us are on a different assignment. You mentioned about Jesus, you know, one day he's a carpenter. And then the very next day, this carpenter is telling you he's the savior of the world. That's similar to us. I know you've probably had conversations and dreams and visions when you were younger. You say, I don't know how, but I'm going to impact the world. I'm going to make a difference. People are going to know this Keandra name. Well, that's similarly how I felt. I didn't know exactly how it was going to manifest. But like when I talked to, you know, some of my family members and people who knew me when I was a teen, it's like, you know what, when we think about it, You've always talked like this. You've always had this crazy dialect that you were going to be something. And so I really believe that it deals with our assignment, not so much that we're better than anybody or anything like that, but it's our assignment. And so one of the things that you have to do is embrace that assignment for yourself. And for me, it happened early on. It was via a question. When I was in the military, my sergeant major, he asked me, he says, Will, where do you see yourself in five years? And up until that time, nobody had ever asked me that question because, you know, you come from Compton. So in, in, in our world, you know, for a kid to hit 18, 19, that was rare, right? The majority of my friends growing up were either in jail or got shot. And I was headed in that same direction. And when he asked me, where do you see yourself in five years? It made me stop and think, like, where do I see myself? And so I said, Sergeant Major, I really don't I really don't know. He says, well, I want you to go back and think about it. Where do you see yourself? And that's when I got introduced to not not really understanding what vision was and what goal setting was. But that's what he was helping me do, shape my future. And so I came back to him and I said, well, two things. Number one, I want to get back into school. I want to get my education and I want to become the best soldier that I can. And he says, well, I can help you do that. And so he began to connect me with people. He connected me with another sergeant who helped me get in, enrolled into college. And this was my first kind of official mentor. So this guy is like, take me, okay, this is here's where you need to go. You need to go talk to the counselor. You need to get your classes. You need to determine, um, you gotta get clear on what degree you wanna get. So all of this type of clarity talk, all this type of vision talk, focusing, forecasting was the thing that really changed me. And then as it would be, one of the very first classes that I enrolled in college was a speech class. And I get into this speech class and I'm a natural. Like the, 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 the instructor, the professor is saying, okay, today we're gonna talk about this hot topic or we go home and read this and we're gonna come back. Everybody else in the class was nervous and I would just get up there and talk. And maybe it was because I used to mimic my pastor growing up, being in the backyard, you know, fake preaching and all that kind of stuff. but. I was like, I was good with a mic. And a lady came up to me and her name was Miss Copeland. And Miss Copeland said, Will, you have a you have a gift. And she hands me this book. And it was a book by uh, Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. And she says, this book is it's an amazing book. It's called African-American Affirmations for 365 Days. She says it has all different types of uh, Black successful people in here. And I was, I was blown away. I'm reading about 
people like Bob Johnson. I'm reading about people uh, like Reginald F. Lewis. And I'm like, wait a minute. They, they don't rap. They don't they don't play basketball or football. And you're telling me that you can generate income, wealth by using your brain. That was like the most fascinating thing. I was like, wait a minute, because I kind of felt before then that I was just kind of regulated to living an average life because where we come from, if you weren't a drug dealer, if you weren't into sports entertainment, we didn't have examples of people that were making big money. But now I'm finding out that there's people out here making big money. And so that was the trajectory that kind of changed me to open up to personal development, open up to speaking, and then understanding that I could literally create a life that I love. Oh my gosh, that's so good. I mean, you really just talked about people, uh, God places people along the way in your journey that he knows that we need that's going to pivot and shift everything. And if y'all think Dr. Will is fluffing or just talking, look at his background, okay? You see all of the stuff in his back? I see that back there? All of the books, <laughs> all of the awards, all of the things that he's accomplished. It's so beautiful to watch a Black man come from humble beginnings and really just be successful. I know that there's some little boys and some little girls who's watching it now, looking at you, looking at me, looking at all of us and saying, wow, if they can do it, so can I. And you know, Keandra, that's why it's so important. And my mentor was challenging me for that young man you just talked about, for that young woman that you just talked about, they need to see because I didn't have that picture and I had to be reminded that, Will, if you had that picture, you would probably wouldn't have done some of the things that you did. So it's so important for Keandra to amplify her voice. It's so important for Will to amplify his voice because there's some young woman, some young man that needs to see, wait, I don't have to dribble a basketball. I don't have to play a sport or entertainment to create the life that I want. And so that's why not, not to brag and boast about ourselves, but to be examples for those that are really coming behind us. So when we go into the community and when we go into these schools, they can say, I can do that. See, I, I tell, I tell when I go into schools all the time, I say, listen, I can't I can't teach you how to be six foot eight, 220 pounds and dunk like LeBron. But these principles I'm, I'm, I'm about to lay on you. You can absolutely do this. See, 99 percent of the population, they can do what we do. They can't do what Beyonce does. They can't do what LeBron does. We're teaching them principles that the average individual, if they got serious and got committed, can literally do. And so you have a better chance of becoming a Keandra or a Dr. Will versus becoming a LeBron, which is a one in a billion chance. Say that. I mean, I'm not going to get on my soapbox, but I do feel like in the Black community, we push like sports and, you know, being an athlete or being a rapper, you know, on our children, which are great outlets for a lot of people. Some people, some kids need to be in organized sports to stay out of trouble. But there's so many other career choices. There's so many other options and things that we can do outside of being an athlete, being in the NFL, the NBA, because like you said, most people don't make it. Like, let's be real. And that's why I'm always intentional about showing up being my authentic self, right? You're going to get the Keandra, you're going to get the little extra sauce. I'm intentional about wearing my natural hair because there's some, you know, little girl out there who feels like her hair isn't beautiful enough. So I think showing up as our authentic self is just really, it's powerful. I want to really get into, before we play our little game, because you know we got to have a little fun on my show. I really, I think my last question for you would be like, what is the secret sauce to going big? Because we use this concept like go big or go home. What right. is this concept and how, what would be like some secrets that you can give to my listeners on how to go big in every area of your life? Because sometimes we focus on, oh, my finances are together. You know, I'm a seven figure earner or a seven figure business owner, but your relationships is raggedy. Your marriage is raggedy. Your relationship with God is raggedy. You know, like how do we make sure that all of our areas of our lives are on point? This has taken me, you know, 40 plus years to get to this answer. And I simplify it by saying it's living from your core. And for me, core is an acronym, C-O-R-E. So you want to get exactly those areas you just talked about. You want to get very clear in each of those areas. So for yourself, what does that mean to be your greatest self, your biggest self? What does it mean to play big? Get clear on that. And then for me, it's knowing that it's possible. Like it's literally 
possible. That's the all the motivation that I need to know that it's possible. You know, I have this thing where um, I say I want to be the first billionaire from Compton, right? I want to be the first big billionaire from Compton. And for me, it's not about becoming a billionaire. It's about understanding that it's possible. That 50 years ago, for a kid like me, it wasn't possible to think like that. That, man, come on. We're just trying to survive. Now you're talking about you want to be a billionaire. So for me, we live in a space where it's possible. I'm not so much if I get there or don't get there. Just the pursuit is enough for me. So I'm clear. So how do you want to, you know, health-wise? How do you want to live health-wise? How do you want to live spiritually? So you want to get crystal clear on that. Then the O is opportunities. Now that you're clear. Now go out there and find the opportunities to be great, to go big. Find the opportunities. The R is relationships. What are the most important relationships? You know, there are 8 billion people on this planet. You can't connect with all of them. You're going to have a circle of individuals that become very important to you. And then you live for them. You live for them. You know, your, your, your closest set of friends, your closest uh, family members. Those are the key relationships. And then... The E is experience. How do you want to experience this beautiful world? There's something like 200 countries on this planet. How many do you want to go visit? How many beaches do you want to go visit? How many hiking trails do you want to experience? And that's for me is living from your core. That's living big. When you live from your, what your word is, authentic self, you're living from your core. So that's what I would suggest for everybody to get to the place where they can live from their core. That's good. He talks like this all the time, y'all. I know him in real life. So these are like gems after gems that he's stage dropping. Like, I am just so enamored by just watching you. You know how sometimes you just, you don't always say things to people and you just, you just need to watch. And sometimes like things are bought, things are caught, things are taught, you know, like sometimes you ain't even got to say nothing to me. I'm like, oh, I see what he did there. I I saw that. I saw that move. So I appreciate your transparency. I appreciate you being a living example of what this could look like. I appreciate you putting God first on your journey because we see so many people who mess it up because they're pursuing the, the lights, the flashing, the glamour, the glitz. And we understand that there's a deeper purpose. Like this is kingdom work all day, every day mm -hmm. for me, for you, you know? And so I know that there's going to be so many people in my audience who wants to stay connected with you. Like, they could, if y'all wasn't taking notes, I don't know what y'all were doing. <laughs> but <laughs> this is just a snippet of what you can learn from him. So, Dr. Will, tell my people a little bit about all the 80 million books you have <laughs> and also how they can stay connected with you. And even if they want to become speakers, you have a genius academy. You got so many resources that is crazy. Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, it's simple. Just at Dr. Will Speaks at all social media platforms. That's the website as well, drwillspeaks.com. I would love to hear about your journey and stay connected. Find out how you're living from your core and how you're making a genius impact. So simply just go to drwillspeaks.com or at Dr. Will Speaks on any social media platform. I love that so much. So are you ready to play a little game? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. Everybody gets nervous when I say, let's play a game. They're like, oh, Lord, what is she going to say? I'm like, y'all need to chill. My games are fun. So we I'm are going to play a game, a lightning speed game of this or that. And this is let's a lightning it. speed round. So that's what you need to give us your answers quickly. You can't be that's, taking forever to say it. That's it. First thing comes to mind. Let's go. Period. So I got 10 this or that questions for you. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> So I have to start off with this one. Red or blue? Red. You know what I'm saying with that. <laughs> all day. Two Red eight. all day? Is that what you say? Red all day. Okay. Oh. <laughs> pineapple on your pizza or candy corn? Uh, Pineapple. Okay. Compton or Inglewood? Compton all day. CPT for life. Cash or credit? Uh, cash is king. Let's go. Okay. Reality TV shows or documentaries? Ooh, that's a hard one. Documentaries. Yep, we gotta learn something. <laughs> Instagram or Facebook? Facebook. I'm gonna let that one slide. I'm gonna let 
outside. That's where I built my that's where I built my brand on Facebook. I'm a loyalist. I I know. I know. That's why I said I'm gonna let you slide on that one. Watching sports or playing sports? Uh ooh, at this age, watching. I ain't trying to break nothing. I'm watching all day long. <laughs> I'm trying to keep my knees and my ankles intact. Right. I got a grandbaby I gotta run after. Okay. Eight is phone calls or texting. Ooh, text. Text all day long. That's surprising to me. I thought you would have said phone calls. Uh-uh. Text all day long. I'm an introvert. I want to be left alone. <laughs> well, that goes to my next question. Introvert or extrovert? I'm a I'm an introvert practicing extrovert, but I'm really truly an introvert. Ex int introvert. Got it. And last but not least, bam or boom? Boom all day <laughs> long. Boom, baby, all day long. <laughs> we know it's going to be boom. Dr. Willis going to say boom all the time. Okay. Just all day. Period. He says boom. Okay. So this was so much fun. Thank you so much, Dr. Will, for being on the Keandra Jackson show. You already know that you are not going to be a stranger, and I am going to have to have you back for a part two because this was just too juicy and too good. Well, before we get out of here, I just want to thank you for creating this space and all that you're doing and the way you show up, you know, Forbes next 1,000, and that's huge, and that's one of the things we talked about going, going big, and there's so many people that need to hear from you, know you so i just appreciate the work that you're doing in the community and around the nation for uh little black girls that uh look like you that they can be inspired that they can be motivated and they can have an example to follow so thank you so much for everything that you do Woo! i'm not even gonna say that this episode was fire like i normally say but y'all know that it was i can't even begin to tell you how fruitful this conversation was and i hope and i pray that something that was said in this video from him or i encourages you to show up as your most authentic self to show up the way that god created you to show up living and operating from your core c-o-r-e as dr will talked about i really think that it is so important for us to live Live in our authenticity and to allow ourselves to experience everything that we're supposed to do. So instead of you playing small, instead of you shrinking back, instead of you saying, oh, that's not for me, it is for you. You are the one. You're the one that's going to impact generations in your life, but you have to show up and be bold enough and brave enough to be the generational shift in your family. So I hope that you will like, comment, and share this with someone who needs it, and I will see you in the next episode. Be blessed. Bye.